I'm uh, Tom Porter, Supervising Technical Director on Monsters Incorporated. Hi, my name is Steve May. I was a simulation and effects sequence supervisor. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Fong. I'm a sequence supervisor for Monsters Incorporated. So part of the character making process involves building stand-in models or test models. And in our case here, we have Johnson, the, the test model for eventually what would come become Sullivan. The art direction of this film was obviously diverging very far from the sort of uh, suburban look of Toy Story and Toy Story 2. We had to define an entire monster world, and I thought it very important to be able to create 3D animation right off the bat to see whether the sort of direction we were going in with the pre-production art was what we wanted to do. So we put together this little conversation between Mike and Sullivan. Obviously, Mike here went through a phase where he had no arms. We wanted to see whether the animators could get an expressive character dealing only with his legs as the only appendage. I actually thought it was quite successful, but of course, in the end, we attached arms to Mike. There were a lot of issues on these uh, early tests that we undertook here. We're looking at Sullivan uh, with tentacles. Uh, one of the obvious questions was whether you even wanted to commit to a main character walking with uh, tentacles over the course of a two-hour film. In the end, we rejected the idea, I think, largely because the audience's eyes were commonly looking at the tentacles at a time when they should have been looking at Sullivan's face. Here is Sullivan close to his final form with the first hair test that convinced us we were definitely on the right track. This was a high point in the hair investigation. So here we have another test version of Sullivan. This one is um, Mulligan. We did a lot of animation tests uh, to make sure that the fur held up in a variety of situations. We were really concerned about various actions and poses that the character could go through. The fur is a fairly complicated process. The hairs are moved by a computer program, and that means that each one of those hairs is somewhat out of our control. So we had to make sure that that software worked really, really well and the only way to do that was to run Sullivan through every kind of test we could think of until we kind of solved every little hitch and problem that you know, could come up uh, over the course of a film. The directors had this uh, idea at one point that Sullivan would wear glasses throughout the film. Uh, this is a dangerous sort of idea. Pixar animation in general is very careful to make sure that the eyes of the character are perfectly readable. The eyes turn out to be a very clear way of expressing the personality of any character. The decision to put glasses on Sullivan meant that uh, perhaps the eyes wouldn't be as readable. These are uh, facial tests. We decided that his fur should be non-dynamic so that it didn't move in distracting ways in the area that we always focus on, which is the face of the character. For a while, Sullivan had a really thick coat of hair on his back. It was like a different color and a different thickness to the hair. It was an interesting test, but eventually we did away with that idea. One of the ways that we made development of the fur easier was we built a really simple model, dubbed the hairball. And we started out with a kind of clean fur look. And then we tried some more extreme cases where we made the hair look like it was wet and slimy or where it looked like it was made out of kind of braided or corded hair. Eventually, uh, Pete and Bob Polly uh, grew attached to the uh, hairball that we used for doing the fur tests, and we made some monsters with it. We added tentacles or legs or, in some cases, arms and, uh, and generated a hair scare and uh, some other background monsters for the movie. This shot really scared me to death. This is the kind of shot that, as an effects artist, it makes the sweat roll down your forehead and makes your heart beat fast. Uh, these tests show uh, the process that we took of the shot as it moved from animation, where the ground is just a, a kind of a flat plane and his body just intersects it. And then it shows how we simulated the fur to show the effect of the wind that would later also drive the snow that we would show in these shots. The snow was actually done in several layers. There's a, the really fine powdery snow that kicks up when he hits it first. There was a level of chunky snow that made these kind of large pieces of snow that would fly out in front of him and actually impact on the ground. And then there was some very, very, very fine uh, powdery snow that almost looked like a soft cloud. And this is in addition to the snow that's just going to be falling down from the sky. This is the final version of the shot. This has all the effects elements added together, and uh, probably the most important element was the snow and the fur. In the end, we modified the way that the first software worked so that we could add things into his, his hair. As each hair is grown, 
we take into account a number of factors, how long he's been out in the snow, what direction the wind is blowing, et cetera, to determine the likelihood that snowflakes will occur on certain parts of his fur. And for that shot, in the end, we ended up with over a million individual snowflakes. So once again, we've gone back to earlier tests of Sullivan. In this case here, we were testing how Sullivan's fur would react to like wind forces. The main thing we were focusing on here was the nozzle on the back spraying over his shoulder. And would it make the fur look like it was reacting to this burst of wind coming out? We did several tests to just show the general motion of his fur. So we had Sullivan run, jog, walk, jump in place, scratch his chest. And the whole idea here was just to make sure that the fur looked like it had the weight of uh, like a real animal's fur would have. We did a lot of tests for Sullivan. One way we tested his fur was to basically build an obstacle course and then run him through it. When we first ran this test with the fur, it didn't go so well. His uh, fur got caught in some of the objects that it was supposed to respond with. It stretched a lot because of the extreme amount of motion. We did another test uh, that you see here. Uh, we got kind of a case of fur mange, you know, where his skin is poking through. Uh, but in the end, we, we solved the problems with the fur with the help of our uh, tools department. And we were able to actually run Sullivan through the obstacle course without any problems occurring. Sullivan is launched from a, a toboggan. He's been outside in a snowy blizzard for a long time, so what we would expect is that he would accumulate snow in his fur as it's falling from the sky and we attached individual snowflakes to the hairs. We would determine how likely it was that there would be a snowflake there based on how long he'd been outside, what direction the wind was blowing, and how he hit the snow when he landed off the sled. The shots department was a new thing for monsters. We were really looking at a very interesting challenge when we started monsters, and that was the challenge of simulation. Between Sullivan and Boo, Boo has a simulated shirt, Sullivan has simulated hair, we were looking at um, probably somewhere in the order of 900 to 1,000 shots that we're going to have simulation. So we're really introducing a whole new step in the pipeline. Um, it's the first time we had actually used simulation in production, and so we were concerned about some of the technical issues that might come up with simulation. So what we decided to do is that because it was something that was really going to have to be done all the time, um, we would restructure things a little bit. We needed some of the real how shall I say, intellectual manpower that we have in, a, in an effects department to solve some of our more challenging simulation problems. But at the same time, we need a sort of the infrastructure of a department that's really used to dealing with every single shot of the film. And so what we did is we took rendering that had that infrastructure in it, and we took effects that had that, that brain power, and we mushed them all together, and we added some people, and trained everybody on simulation, and came up with the shots department. The next step is when the shot leaves animation and comes into the shots department. And in particular for this shot, we're going to be simulating Sullivan's fur. It's an important part. It's a part of Sullivan's look to put all that fur on it. But most importantly, simulation is really where we're adding um, the overlapping action in the animation. So we're really breathing an additional amount of life into that character um, by having that fur reacting to the motion. The hair there is really flouncing in reaction. It adds a lot of life. Um, it really conveys his emotion of being bouncy in that scene. After the animation is final, we still have to add the shaders, which is the textures and the colors, basically, and the lighting, which is the shadows and the depth. It's only after these shaders and lighting is finished that the film looks like what you see in the theater.